Larry, let's talk about, let's get down to the nitty gritty, right? Because like, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. I know this is probably one of your favorite times because all the stuff comes out, the owners meetings, the new league rules, it's a new league year. Uh, I talked about them earlier on the show. Uh, now, before I get to the, the gist of the one that we're going to talk about today, yeah. uh, you know, on this show, what are your thoughts overall of the, the new league rules uh, for the new league year? Any of them stand out to you more than others? I didn't even see the new league rules. I mean, I, I, oh. is there any major changes? I didn't even see that yeah. today. Is that today? Not really. Uh, they came out yesterday. Uh, NFL communications.com. They released them on yesterday for NFL.com. No, not major changes. I mean, people get to wear the number zero. Uh, you know, I don't know how big you are on number zeros in football. We see it a lot in basketball, but now we're going to be able to see it in football. There are a couple of 49er players that wore zero in college. I like yeah, it. I like it too. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm a Jason Tatum fan and he wears zero. So why not? Why not I'm looking zero? for the list of the new rules here. Okay. Um, uh, let's see if you go. Uh, I could what else? What that. else? What other new rules do you like? Do you have? I, yeah, they, I mean, none of them really stuck out. You know, it was just a couple of amendments, Um, you know, stuff that kind of, oh, they talked about them expanding the fourth down, Uh, you know, official review, like expanding it. So the way I tried to interpret it, because I definitely wanted to get your opinion on this was are they expanding it now to New York to where New York is really going to make the call? Because I always thought that was the rule, but maybe it was a rule at a certain time and a game to where New York enforced it. Now, let me take you back to Philadelphia, the NFC championship game, the non catch that was rude as a catch on fourth down Devontae Smith caught a pass, which was incomplete. The league was supposed to review it and overturn it from New York. They chose not to. They, Said it was a catch. I'm thinking that's what this rule helps in those type of situations. I mean, well, I'll say this. I mean, anything they can do to perfect their replay situation will be appreciated for sure. Um, I know they're they're doing an expansion for um, they're they're going to do a change that's going to enable the replay official to initiate of the review of a pe- of a play when on field rule rule of an offense failed to reach the line to gain on fourth down. So mm-hmm. like if they see above that you, you know, that, that they want to question it, they can now, you don't have to call. See, I never liked the idea of mm-hmm. having, you know, we're going to use replay, but it's going to only be called from the field up. We're not going to go from the, from the camera down. It's like, what? Why don't right. we go from the person who has the best information down to the officials instead of having this game of, well, should we challenge? Should we not challenge? I'm standing on a sideline, but I've, I'm in radio contact with a guy who's in a booth who's telling me. I mean, that's. do you see how ridiculous that is? We have the technology. Use the technology. It, it, if it, you go to the racetrack, if we go to the racetrack, Yep. I don't know if you ever go out to the racetrack. You ever been I've to the never racetrack? been to a racetrack. I've only seen it on The Simpsons. All right. If you go to a racetrack and there's a photo finish, two horses right at the end. Got you. Right? Okay. It just, they don't say horse one won and horse two lost. Uh-huh. Pending overwhelming, fit, you know, video, uh, you know, in, um, confirmation. They just yeah. say photo finish. Photo finished. When and then they look at the photo, and whoever won, they give the award to, or you know they give the uh, the win to. When the horses bump in the lane, it will just say inquiry, and then you'll oh. find out what they apps you know what they rule instead of having everything be from the field where the game's so fast and there's elements and there's volume and weather and all the different things that go on. Uh, that interfere you being able to make the right call. Why not get the guy in the comfy, cozy booth who's looking at the game from a million angles and has all kinds of manpower? And he says, "Oh, we got a problem. That was a drop. Where? Oh, look at look at the replay. It was a drop. Boom. They they call from New York down to the field. This was a drop. Boom. Not not like did Kyle Shanahan challenge it? He didn't. Should he did Hafonga motion enough to, you know what I mean? It's like going yeah, back to that Philly game. There's just a lot of garbage in the NFL replay. If you're going to have replay, uh-huh. 
use the replay and get the calls right. Don't turn it into some game where you get, you're risking timeouts and this and that have a guy in a, have several people watching these games and looking for the call. And if they call, if the call's right, the call's right. And then go from the booth to the field. Don't go from the field to the booth back down to the field. Guys, eliminate one angle. Right. I hope, I hope everybody's comprehending what you're saying because it's super simple, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let the guy that's just watching the damn camera just be the one that makes the call. Right. On on the photo finish types of plays. Right. Because that was when when you do a play like that, that's a photo finish. I like that. That was the perfect term. I've heard it all my life and I've just never seen it in real life. That's the perfect term photo finish. Let me take a snapshot to see if this person completed that pass all the way down to the ground. If that ball moves, and maybe they got to do a video finish in football because, you know, there's always motion going on. But I mean, the game's fast. I mean, I don't, and people always say, well, the officials are too old and this and that. No, no. Go stand on an NFL sideline and see how fast the game is and then come back and be critical of these officials. The athletes are fast. The game is incredibly fast. It, it's sometimes faster than what you can see. And so that you need video replay. The game's so fast that video replay is needed now more than ever, but just use it in a way where you get it right. The most number of times and take some of the let's, and here's another thing, Breezy. And I want to talk about this at the end of the last end of the year, mm-hmm. but let's take some of this stuff off of the shoulders of the head coaches and let Thank them you. coach football. Seriously, do we have to turn everything into some competitive? Shanahan didn't do it. Shanahan, you know, that's what you were going to get. Sirianni yep. did this. Shanahan did yep. that. Why not? If you're going to have replay and you're going to spend all the money, just have somebody say. From above, what was the, was the right call? Yeah, I mean, it should not be. Did you know one replay after a commercial? Did Hafanga see it? He kind of motion. Should Kyle have challenged it? All decide in a second. You're in rain. It's cold. People are screaming "F you, Kyle!" Fifty feet away. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It's a oh, weird yeah. situation to then be super exact in. It sounds, in theory, like a good idea to let the coaches. Do it, but let the let the replay officials. I would feel more confident if New York took bit more control of these games and took some of those kinds of things off of the head coach's plate. I feel like what they're trying to do, though, Larry, is put the inexperienced coach. And it, I don't think it matters if you're experienced or not. I mean, you're asked to make a quick, rational decision at a split second of time. It's it's got to be a lot of pressure on the head coaches to have to make that. So why even? I mean, I, for for some reason, the NFL wants that competitiveness edge, uh, relying on the coach, and then if the coach doesn't call the timeout. I think what it was was Kyle called the timeout, and then he they said he couldn't challenge it, and so they gave him his timeout back. If I'm not mistaken, that's what happened. But then when you watch the damn replay. The ball was bobbled and he never completed the. the I, I I I sometimes I don't understand. We didn't get the replay. The TV audience, at least the, uh, what I was watching, the TV audience didn't get the conclusive third angle re, of the replay that oh. showed definitively that Devontae had fumbled that ball until after they had scored the touchdown. Oh. Do you remember that? We didn't no, see that. I was that. at the game. I was there. We didn't, okay, so we okay, so they. The play happens. It's bang, bang. They're running down there, you know, the field to quickly snap the ball, which is always anytime the receiver is like trying to motion, let's get it snapped. Let's get it, get it snapped right there. You know, that's a huge red flag. Challenge the play that one right there. Then there was the Hafanga saying incomplete. incomplete. That was mm-hmm. number two. So Shanahan blew that. What I'm saying though, He's still on the sideline talking to somebody who only has got what we got, I think, which is they're looking at his guys are watching the TV. So, yeah, there's somebody in New York who saw all the angles right away. But the guy who Shanahan's talking to to decide if he wants a challenge or not is seeing what you and I are seeing, the TV copy, and they didn't show that angle until after they actually scored the touchdown or after they came back from the commercial, I believe. And that's, that's the, so, that's and that's that. So, I, you know, once I again, 
let's perfect this. Let's perfect this and take this out of the head coach's purview and just put it on a replay official. Just don't take one part of the game that right now you're leaning on the coaches to kind of make the right call. Take it out, take it out of their hands and just have somebody and just guarantee that you always mm-hmm. make the right call. Right. right. Just put it on give give one official that job, and then we can thrash that official. Well, I mean, then at least it's coming from New York and it's like, Correct. you know what? You just Correct. put up the inquiry or put up the red flag or whatever, pause, do whatever yeah. you need to do to pause the game, whatever the mechanics are of it, but have it come from New York and take that off the plate of the head coaches. And and then they, they can just call the game. They don't have to yeah. worry about, do I challenge here? I Was like that. that, you know, I mean, based on what somebody in my earphone said from above that they saw the TV copy because there we saw the flaw in it this year in the playoffs. We didn't get the TV copy of the, of the call until after the play was decided. There it is. Hey guys, thumbs up. If you agree with Larry, yeah, my thumb is up thumbs down. If you disagree with Larry, go ahead and put it in the chat. All right. We're going to be moving on before we do that though. We do have a super chat contribution at the beginning of the show. I always do the touchdown horn for the contributions. So just don't be alarmed. Jax Knox says, hey, Breezy and Larry, let's great shoe guys. I know she meant show. So I'm going <laughs> to, but I had to read it, you know, the way it was spelt. It's all good. Thank you, Miss Jacqueline. We appreciate the super chat contribution. <laughs> all right. So here is something that I definitely want to get your take on, right? So yeah. there's a new Thursday night football rule. Okay, and the rule is that teams now can have up to two Thursday night football games per season. So let's talk about this, because last time I checked, I mean, here's the here's the benefit of it. You know, they get longer weeks to recover if that's how you want to look at it. That's the only benefit. They get a longer time or a longer period to recover after the game because they get you know the rest of the week off and then up to that next week right so what are your thoughts about this thursday night football rule two games per season now well as long i mean jack hammer who i just talked to on my channel the krug show said that said that made a great point and his point was that if you're gonna do it there's only one equitable way to do it and that is to have consecutive thursday night games you know only interrupt them with a short week once as opposed to interrupting their schedule with two short weeks. Ah. Um, yeah, they get two breaks of longer time to <clears throat> to rehab after that. But what he's saying is, if you're going to play Thursday, play the next two Thursdays. Right. You know, so at least you're, you're, you know, there's only one adjustment period. That makes sense. Because I one thing I want to see less of is I want to see less of, hey, you played Sunday, but you're playing again Thursday. Right. You know, that... Right. I want to see less of that. But, so there's a way to do that. You can play back to back Thursdays. Then who, you only who, have that one time. I don't, I'm not sure of the rule to where as if the, the teams get to schedule one game or is the league straight up just going to schedule both Thursday games. And if they do that, how are they going to schedule these teams to play back to back like that? Yeah. I don't know the, how they're going to actually get it done, but yeah, that's really be. the only way to do it. Otherwise you're, I mean, and first of all, I don't know about you, but I think the Thursday night product is lousy. I it's really the, do. It doesn't, it's Monday night. You get an extra day to, yes. you know, to prepare on, on Thursday night. You're it's always based on you just played and you're going to be playing somewhere else. And just the games are bad. The quality's bad. Yeah. The, the number of guys who have to sit it out are, is always a number of guys to me. If you're going to do more Thursday and stay with Thursday, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of upping either the number of people on the, on the roster roster, or maybe the number of people on the practice squad that you can then easily move onto the roster. If they don't want to change the roster size, if they just want to, but I mean, they need more players to choose from. Um, if they're going to play more Thursday, Sunday deals. All right. My man, Steve says the league schedules the first and then the second Thursday game could be a flex. I I believe that's kind of like how it's a cash grab for the league. That a flex means that you're one of the the better matchups that week and they want to move you into a prime time slot. But I mean, it's all, that's all about them. 
That's not so, you know who that, doesn't benefit there is the players. But I mean, this is what makes yes they is, do from the fact that they share the revenue. But I mean that's it's very indirect. But I'm thinking this is how it makes sense for us now because maybe it's not all 32 teams. It's just that there's an option that there's teams of the 32 that will get flexed into that second Thursday football game. Right. You're not going to have any say. The league's going to have the say. Damn. The league's going to. And guess what? There, It's most likely going to be the better teams. So, Correct. you know, teams like the Niners, this is a rule that does impact the Niners because um, they're likely to play in a primetime Thursday that they are they don't know about right now. Correct. That is that is 100% correct. So, Late in the year. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. And teams and I mean, teams just generally don't want to play on Thursday anyway. I mean, they're coming off of a short week. Uh, Larry, you've interviewed tons of players, especially football players. They tell you what it's like. I mean, after a game on Sunday, they usually have Monday off. Right. And then they start their kind of like rest, relaxation, rehabilitation, and then they still practice. So like you have to truncate that and still play on a short week on a Thursday. Those guys are still hurting, banged up, beat up. You know what I'm saying? So like the Thursday well, you game, see it, Breezy, you see it with the way um, you, you see it with the way they kind of go with the or Ch- Kyle will use his backs and use some of his players. He'll use guys the previous Sunday and then give them the Thursday off and then uh, use different guys sometimes on that Thursday game, especially, you know, especially run. This is where running back depth, I think can help you is if you can somehow use a different back to be the, you know, the primary back in, in the Wednesday, you know, in the uh, Thursday, Sunday turnaround. And that's yeah. the good thing with the Niners. They do have a lot of depth in the backfield. They do. They do. And and I expect them to add more too, uh, <laughs> whether it's in the draft or undrafted, they're going to continue to add depth in the backfield. Um, not sure they're so stuck on who they have, but they're always looking for ways to improve. 